Today, we're talking about steaks. No, not this kind of steaks. This is actually salmon. I had limited options in the freezer. I also used that same joke in the intro to the character foils video, so I should probably put that back before it thaws. Steaks are basically what's on the line for the protagonist should they fail at overcoming the main conflict of the story. This could be related to something they might lose if they fail or something they will fail to gain if they fail. Stakes relate very closely to the main conflict of the story, but they're a separate thing, really. Stakes are what hold a reader's interest throughout the story. It's what makes the reader care about the central plot of the story and one of the reasons that they get invested in characters. If the reader doesn't understand what's at stake or they don't feel that the stakes are important, then they won't be interested in the story. A lot of times when a story fails to engage the reader, it's because the stakes weren't well communicated or simply weren't high enough or they were too high, which is something we'll talk about. The, sta the, the stakes being too high, not the, not the reader. Stakes are a necessary part of building tension. They are a lot of what will pull the reader through the story. Get them wrong and the story is going to seem flat. It's not going to be interesting. You'll have problems with pacing, all kinds of things. So here are some tips on writing good stakes. Tip number one, make the stakes personal to the protagonist. Why the hell isn't somebody else doing this is a question you should be asking of your protagonist. Your story is probably going to involve a significant amount of work and sacrifice for your protagonist. So this is a valid question to ask. There needs to be a compelling personal motivation for the protagonist to even care about the stakes, let alone do something about them. If your protagonist doesn't have a personal connection to the main conflict, and thus a personal connection to the stakes surrounding that conflict, then they don't have anything to lose if they fail. This is going to result in a lack of tension, as it doesn't matter if the protagonist succeeds or not. This lack of tension will lead to a lack of interest in the reader. It will also make the story feel a bit disjointed as the protagonist won't seem to fit with the conflict. So how can you make the stakes more personal? Start by establishing what's important to the protagonist and make sure that whatever is important to them is threatened in some way by the main conflict. This can be, as I mentioned before, either something that they will lose if they fail or something they will fail to gain if they fail. It's the second time I've worded that that awkwardly. Another way to do this is to tie the main stakes of the central conflict into a separate personal component for the protagonist. As I talked about in the conflict video, internal conflict generally comes in the form of a flaw that the character needs to overcome. If the stakes relate to overcoming that flaw and the protagonist knows that they need to overcome that flaw, then the stakes will be more personal. Relatability also plays a part in this. If what the protagonist stands to lose is something that the reader can relate to, the fact that it is so relatable will make it inherently more personal for the protagonist. Because generally the protagonist is a person and the reader is also a person, and if the reader who is a person can relate to the same things that the protagonist who is a person can relate to, then by definition it is more personal, I think. This is why in Save the World type stories the protagonist will have a family or a love interest or a cat that they are motivated to save. Saving the entire world from destruction, as strange as this sounds, isn't actually a very relatable problem for most readers but protecting a loved one or not wanting a loved one to come to harm is a much more grounded and relatable idea. It's also something that people value very highly. Which brings us nicely to tip number two. Tip number two, make sure the stakes are high enough, but also not too high. Stakes are basically a game of literary chicken between you and the reader. You're setting out all these bad things that will happen should the protagonist fail, and you're doing your best to convince the reader that failing is a distinct possibility. 
The reader in the back of their mind knows that nine times out of ten, the protagonists are going to succeed and avoid these negative consequences. But suspension of disbelief and good writing makes them interested enough to keep turning the pages. Now, if the stakes aren't high enough, the reader, as I said before, won't be engaged. They won't have a reason to care. But if the stakes are too high, then they won't believe that there's a possibility that the protagonist could ever fail. This is why broader scale, save the universe or prevent the apocalypse type stories tend to have the protagonist also dealing with some level of personal stakes. Besides adding relatability, as I talked about before, these smaller scale stakes are also more believable. Writers are in general you know, heartless, emotionless people, but the reader is still going to have a hard time believing that they would end the story with the entire world being destroyed. A smaller, personal level loss for a character is a lot more plausible, which means the reader is more likely to believe that the protagonist could fail. This is going to seem a bit contradictory, but one of the best ways to raise stakes is actually to lower them while still making them important to the protagonist. Something that doesn't have planet scale importance, but is still very important to the protagonist, is likely going to be more gripping for the reader rather than something that is of planet scale importance, yet wholly impersonal to the protagonist. This is an important point. You can make stakes more engaging without necessarily raising them to levels that mean the protagonist absolutely cannot fail. Now let's take a moment and abruptly transition to the next tip. Tip number three, make sure to consider the antagonist as well. In, in general, you should think about the antagonist, but specifically to, with, with regard to stakes. Narrative conflict is often presented as a zero-sum game. In order for the protagonist to win, the antagonist has to lose. There are stories out there where the protagonist arrives at some kind of resolution that makes everyone happy, but those are usually the exception. Everything about stakes that we've talked about thus far also applies to the antagonist. They need to have a personal connection to the stakes, they need to have something to lose, and they need a compelling reason why they don't want to lose. Building these things for the antagonist is really no different than the protagonist. I mention this here because a lot of times these things aren't clearly communicated to the reader. We have a good sense of what the stakes mean for the protagonist, but we may not have a good sense of what they mean for the antagonist. This is part of a broader discussion about creating a good villain, which I conveniently have a video on. I will also inconveniently forget to add a card for that, probably. I cover a lot of how to do that in the villain video, but just remember to establish what the stakes mean for your villain and also communicate them to the reader. And also, I'm aware that antagonists aren't the same things as villains, but I was getting really tired of saying antagonists. It's like a lot of syllables. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found the advice in it useful. If you want to see more stuff like this, you can check out all my other writing advice videos and subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every Wednesday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.